Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So far, Boris Johnson has not made himself available for the forensic questioning of a one-to-one -one interview. The Eddie Mayor Show requested an, inter an interview with him today, and we were turned down. We asked to interview any of his many supporters who were at that launch today. You heard them. And again, the answer was no. So the only questions we can bring you are the six that were allowed at the news conference. The people asking the questions are at a disadvantage because once the question is asked, only Boris Johnson has the microphone, so follow-ups are impossible. And as you hear, Boris Johnson didn't answer all of the questions. First, the BBC political editor, Laura Koonsberg. Um, thank you very much. Um, Mr Johnson, you suggested that Brexit would be a straightforward win-win and actually it's been a chaotic mess. As Foreign Secretary, you offended people at home and abroad. You have a reputation for being cavalier with vital detail and already in this campaign you're telling some supporters you'll do everything to avoid leaving the EU without a deal and others that you gladly would do that. It's a simple question. If you want to be Prime Minister, can the country trust you? Well, yes, of course, Laura. And the answer, I think, perhaps in that uh, great ministrony of observations, was one substantive question, uh, which, which was, which was that uh, one crouton uh, I, I picked up, which was that you think that I've been somehow inconsistent. I mean, I try, I'm somehow inconsistent, Laura, in saying that uh, I don't want a no deal outcome, uh, but I think it is right for our... And Boris Johnson went on to repeat the point he'd made about not wanting a no-deal Brexit, but saying it was vital to prepare for it. Next up, the Sky News political editor, Beth Rigby. Thank you, Mr Johnson. Mr Johnson, you brandish your Brexit credentials, but many of your colleagues worry about your character. Your foreign office... My, my parrot. Your character. My parrot, sorry. Your character. Uh, your former Foreign Office colleague, Alistair Burt, said your description of the PM's plan as a suicide vest wrapped around Britain was, quote, outrageous, inappropriate and hurtful. He said this language had to stop, but it doesn't stop. You brought shame on your party when you described veiled Muslim women as letterboxes and bank robbers. People who have worked closely with you do not think you're fit to be Prime Minister. Well, Beth, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm delighted that um, many of my former colleagues uh, seem to dissent from, from, from that view. But, but, nonetheless, I want to make a, I want to make a general point. You, you, you've asked a fair question, Beth, and a good question. I want to make, and I want to make a general point about, uh, about the way I do things in the way and, and, and the language I use, because of, of course. Occasionally some plaster comes off the ceiling as a result of uh, a phrase I may have used or indeed as a result of the way that phrase has been wrenched out of context and interpreted by those who wish uh, for reasons of their own to caricature uh, my views. But I think it is vital that we as politicians remember that one of the reasons why the public feels alienated now from us all as a, as a, as a breed uh, politician is because too often they feel we are muffling and veiling our language, if I might put it that way. <laughs> not, speaking, not speaking as we find, uh, covering everything up in bureaucratic platitudes, when what they want to hear is what we genuinely think. And if sometimes in the course of trying to get across what I genuinely think, I, I use phrases and language that have caused offence, of course I'm sorry for the offence that I have caused, but I will continue to speak as directly as I can, because I, that is what I think the British public wants to hear. ITV's political editor, Paul Brand, asked if Boris Johnson had ever done anything illegal, and he replied he hadn't always stuck to the speed limit. Paul Brand asked if he regretted any of his personal or political mistakes. Boris Johnson ignored that and asked his own question of himself, did he do what he promised to do as a politician? And the answer he gave to his own question was yes. 
Then the questions and the answers became even more interesting. Boris Johnson formally launched his Conservative leadership bid today. Would you like him to be your Prime Minister? 0345 973 And because he's uh, so far not agreed to any forensic one-to-one interviews during this uh, brief campaign for a tiny electorate, uh, we are going as forensically as we can through the six questions he did agree to answer today. Uh, the fourth question at the news conference launch was from the Daily Mail political editor Jason Groves. Thank you. Um, Can we sort out this drugs question, which seems to have uh, bedeviled this campaign so far? You told GQ uh, some years ago now when asked whether you'd taken cocaine. Yes, I tried it at university, and I remember it vividly, and asked whether the drug had actually gone up your nose. You said, yes, it must have done, uh, but it didn't do much for me. Were you telling the truth then, and do you regret the fact that you took a Class A drug? Well, I think the canonical account of this Uh, event when I was 19 has appeared many, many times and I think what most people in this country uh, really want us to focus on in this campaign, if I may say so, uh, is what we can do for them. And Boris Johnson, as you heard, not answering the question about cocaine and choosing instead to drift off again into talking about this great country of ours, which, to be honest, sounds better with musical accompaniment. I think the canonical account of this Uh, event when I was 19 has appeared many, many times and I think what most people in this country uh, really want us to focus on in this campaign, if I may say so, uh, is what we can do for them and what our plans are for this great country of ours. And uh, I think that the prospectus that I'm uh, setting out this morning uh, of, of solid modern conservatism, of a one nation vision championing the wealth creating sector of our of our country extolling the the merits and i don't think we've done it enough over the last few years extolling the merits of a free market capitalism yes i'm going to use that word extolling the merits of free market capitalism because we believe that that is the way to support the poorest and the neediest in society that is at the core of what we're trying to do that is a message that i don't think people have heard enough in the last few years. I'm absolutely determined to make it the core of my campaign and all the rest of it, frankly, is I think in danger of blowing us off uh, blowing us off track. Let's focus on what conservatism is. Let's can focus what conservatives can do. That is what the public want to hear and what they want to hear also is can we find a leader now who can beat Jeremy Corbyn and deliver a sensible Brexit that fights off the threat from the insurgent Brexit party. And I have to say that uh, that is a, the job that I believe I'm, I'm best suited uh, to do today. The fifth of the six questions allowed came from the political editor of the Financial Times, George Parker. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure he did. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Johnson. Um, I just wondered if I could ask you, you mentioned earlier about some of your phraseology has a tendency to blow the plaster off the ceilings. Could I ask you, I won't use the word because this this, uh, press conference is being broadcast live, but you famously said F business. I wonder what you would say to FT readers who are concerned that that off the cuff comment might turn out to be official policy should you become prime minister. What exactly did you mean when you said F business? Well, George, first of all, I want to say I, I genuinely do love the Financial Times, and I have your app, and I read your work uh, literally every day. Boris Johnson didn't answer the question, which was to explain what he meant when he said F business. The final attempt at getting an answer came from The Guardian political editor, Heather Stewart. Hello. Um, uh, you've promised against day to exit the EU on the 31st of October, with or without a deal. Um, but Brussels may not be as susceptible to your charms as you hope, and MPs are already moving to block a no-deal exit. What then? And will you commit now to resign if you fail to meet that 31st well, of October deadline? I, I understand. Of course, I, of course I understand that uh, colleagues in, in Parliament are, uh, have very strong views, but uh, our job is to engage with everybody and to, just to point out that the real existential threat that I now think faces uh, both major parties if we fail to get this thing done. And uh, I think that in the end, uh, 
maturity and... Well, there was no answer to the question about what he'd do if a no-deal Brexit was blocked by MPs. We're standing by for that result, by the way. And no answer to the question whether he'd resign if he failed to get the UK out of the EU by October the 31st. He chose to talk in his answer instead about the referendum result, the perils of Parliament blocking Brexit and the teaching of French and German in schools. So overall on these six questions, on trust he did answer and he said he could be trusted. He didn't answer the question about colleagues who didn't think he's fit to be Prime Minister. He didn't answer the question about regretting mistakes. He didn't answer the question about taking cocaine. He didn't explain what he meant when he said F-business. And he offered no detail on what he would do if MPs blocked a no-deal Brexit.